The start of authority record defines the authoritative name server for the domain and configures its properties and characteristics. Since each domain needs a unique zone file, we cannot add more than one start of authority record in a zone file. We can add only one start of authority record in a zone file. It uses the following syntax. Let us understand the syntax field by field. This field specifies the domain or zone name. The name server whose name we specify in the name server field becomes the authoritative name server for the domain or zone whose name we specify in this field. Since we used init symbol here, it will be replaced by the origin directives value. This field defines the time for which other name servers or resolver systems can cache this record. If we leave this field empty, DNS uses the default value defined in the time to live directive. This field defines the class type of this record. There are three classes, in, ch, and hs. Currently, only the in class is used. The ch and hs classes were used when the internet was an in-house project in the MIT lab. ch stands for chaos. It is an MIT LAN protocol. HS stands for Hesiod. It is an information service used at MIT. IN stands for the internet that we use today. Currently, only the IN class is used. CH and HS classes are used in special cases for specific reasons. This field defines the type of record. This field defines the authorized name server for this domain. It only defines the authorized name server for the domain. It does not map an IP address with it. To map an IP address with the authorized name server, we also need to create a host record for it. This field defines the administrative email address of the domain. You can use any valid email address in this field. Generally, administrators use the email address hostmaster here. It describes the purpose of this field. In other configuration files, the at symbol is used as the separator in the email address. In a zone file, the at symbol has a special meaning. DNS replaces the at symbol with the origin directives value. If we specify the email address hostmaster at the rate example.com, DNS will read it as hostmaster.example.com.example.com. To avoid this confusion, DNS uses the dot separator here. In this record, I use the email address hostmaster.example.com as the administrative email address. DNS will read this address as hostmaster at the rate example.com. These fields control the zone transfer process. Before we understand these fields, let's understand what a zone transfer is and how it works. A zone transfer is a process in which a master name server transfers zone files to the slave name server. As we know, in the DNS system, we can create zone files only on the master name server. The master name server automatically transfers zone files to the slave name servers when it receives zone transfer requests. The slave name server periodically sends zone transfer requests to the master name server. The slave name server uses these fields to define and control the frequency of the zone transfer requests. There are two types of zone requests, the complete zone transfer request and the start of authority record transfer request. The slave name server uses both types to speed up and optimize the zone transfer process. The first time, it makes the complete zone transfer request. The master name server transfers the zone file. The slave name server saves the received zone file. The next time, Instead of making the complete zone transfer request, the slave name server makes the start of authority record transfer request. The master name server transfers the start of authority record. The slave name server compares the received start of authority record serial number with the locally saved zone file start of authority record serial number. If both numbers are the same, it assumes that the master name server's zone file is not changed. It keeps using the locally saved zone file. If both numbers are different, it thinks that the master name server's zone file has been changed. It sends a complete zone transfer request to the master name server. The master name server transfers the updated zone file. The slave replaces the locally saved zone file with the received zone file. This way, after the first time, a slave name server makes a complete zone transfer request only when the master name server's zone file changes. It uses the start of authority record serial number to detect changes in the master name server's zone file. Since the slave name server uses this number to detect changes, you need to update this number every time you make a change to this file. There is no predefined rule for this number. You can use any number from this range. Usually, administrators use the current date in the YYMMDD format and an incremental sequence number from the range 0 to 99 to generate a unique and updated serial number for every change they make in the file. For example, if we expend this serial number using this technique, we get these values. 
These values show this file was last updated on June 25, 2023. A 00 in the sequence field shows that this file was updated only once on June 25, 2023. If administrators update a zone file more than once per day, they can use incremental sequence numbers for every update. For example, this serial number shows the file was updated three times on June 25, 2023. The refresh time field sets the refresh time. The slave name server uses this time to determine how quickly it should check the master name server for an update. In this zone file, this time is set to 12 hours. Because of this, the slave name server checks for an update every 12 hours. If it gets an update, it asks for the next update after 12 hours. For example, the slave name server tries to reach the master name server at 12 a.m. If it connects, it will try again at 12 p.m. But if it fails, it will try again after the retry time. The retry time field defines the retry interval. If the slave name server fails to connect with the master name server, it can try again after this time. For example, in this zone file, this time is configured to 15 minutes. Because of this, the slave name server will try again every 15 minutes if it fails to connect to the master name server in a refresh cycle. It will keep trying until the expiry time. In this example, the expiry time is 3 weeks. Therefore, it will try to connect the master name server every 15 minutes until 3 weeks. For example, if it first tries on 12 a.m. of July 1, 2023, then it will try till 12 a.m. on July 22, 2023. If it succeeds on any try, it resets the refresh and retry times. If it fails to contact the master server till the expiry is reached, it stops working as a slave name server for the zone. After this time, it will not resolve queries for the domain. A slave name server resolves queries for the zone when the master name server is down. It resolves queries for the domain until the master is up or the expiry is reached. After the expiry, it does not resolve queries for the domain. At this point, since both the master name server and the slave name server are not resolving queries, the zone is considered dead. Resolver systems use the negative cache value to store negative responses. This value applies to all records served from this zone file. DNS provides this value in each answer. Let's take an example. Suppose, a resolver system asks this name server to resolve the name xyz.example.com. The server checks its zone file and finds no entry for the name xyz.example.com. It returns an error indicating the requested name does not exist and can't be resolved. It also includes the negative cache TTL fields value in the error message. The resolver system saves the answer in the cache and does not send a query to resolve the same name again until the negative cache time expires. In this example, the resolver system will not send a query to resolve the name xyz.example.com in the next two hours, starting from the time it received the response. For example, if it receives a negative response at 2 p.m., it will not retry until 4 p.m. for the same name. That's all for this video. If you have any suggestions, comments, or feedback about this video, please share them with us in the comment section given below.